In the ramp lab, we're trying to figure out how we can represent the motion of something that changes its velocity. How does its position change over time? Its velocity change over time? How might we represent that with something called a motion map? And can we come up with algebraic representations or equations for either how position changes, velocity changes, or both? Well, at this point in class, you've already collected position versus time graph data and made a graph. And so now I want to talk to you about how we're going to use that graph to calculate how fast the spinner was going at specific times so we can graph velocity versus time and ultimately come up with an equation for that. If you've not collected data already, there's videos linked in the description below that would allow you to collect the data. And there's also a video that describes how you go about collecting that data, again, linked in the video description below. So at this point, you should have already collected your position and time data. Where was the front of the spinner each and every second? Uh, either you collected this in class or used a video to collect that data. And when we looked at it, all of us got curves, essentially, top opening parabolic curves that were getting steeper over time. And we thought, hey, that makes sense because the spinner is increasing its speed. It's getting faster and faster as it moves down those rails. And so the slope of our position time graph should be getting steeper and steeper over time because the slope of a position versus time graph, we said, represents the spinner's velocity. Well, the question is, how do we use the collected data that we have to figure out what the velocity is each and every second so we can graph velocity versus time? And how is that increasing? Linearly, non-linearly? Well, we don't know yet until we figure it out. Reminder, you guys should have at, le have at least 10 different data points in order to do this analysis. So let's look at some sample data of a spinner that was collected. Uh, positions for each and every second. Here we have 13 data points, and here it's plotted. Well, we want to figure out, well, what is the spinner's velocity at specific times? Well, let's go back. Do we have any equations that we've come up with? Think about our toy car lab, where we can calculate the velocity of something. Well, the only equation we have so far is this one, where it says velocity, or average velocity, is equal to change in position over change in time, or displacement over time. Well, let's look at our data set. What's the total displacement of the spinner, and how much time did that take? Well, if we just take our first and our last data point, it started at a position of 0 centimeters and made it to 81 centimeters, and it did that in a total time of 13 seconds. So the spinner's displacement was at 81 centimeters, and it took 13 seconds to do so. So if you calculate that, that gives you a value of 6.23 centimeters per second. That was its velocity. Well, when did it have that velocity? Well, what are we actually calculating? Like This is our equation we said for average velocity. So this doesn't represent the velocity the spinner had at any particular time. It just means if we, if we averaged all the velocities the spinner had when it started from rest, to the point we stopped collecting data for this data set, on average it was moving 6.23 centimeters per second. But that's not actually what we want because we want to know at you know one second how fast was it going, or at two seconds what is its velocity, or three seconds what is its velocity. We want to know velocities at specific instants in time, and for that we actually want something known as instantaneous velocity, the velocity something is moving at at a specific instant in time. So the question is, how do we figure out the instantaneous velocity on a position versus time graph where the velocity is not staying constant? It's the slope is getting steeper, which means the velocity is getting greater and greater as time goes on. Well, let's say, let's do that, talk about that for three specific points. Let's say we wanted to know the spinner's velocity at one second and five seconds and the instantaneous velocity at nine seconds. Well, what could we draw on the graph which represents the steepness at a particular point? Well, it turns out, to do that, we have to draw tangent lines. We have to draw a line that essentially touches uh, our, our curve, in this case, exactly at the point we're trying to figure out the velocity for. So if we draw a tangent line at one second, the slope of that line would be the instantaneous velocity at one second, when the, when the clock says one second, at that instant or the slope of this line, this is drawn tangent to our curve, you know, where it touches at 5 seconds would be the instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds, and again the tangent line at 9 seconds would be the instantaneous velocity at 9 seconds. So if we have a graph, a nice uh, quantitative graph of position versus time, 
we'd have to figure out the slopes of all the tangent lines to figure out the instantaneous velocities for each specific time interval. So let's just do that for one real quick to see how we could do that. So let's do that for five seconds. So I've taken everything off just so it doesn't get in the way and I've extended our tangent line that touches our curve exactly at five seconds. So if we can figure out the slope of this tangent line that will be as precise as we can get experimentally the velocity is moving at at the fifth second. Not before, not after, but at that specific instant in time. Well, to find the slope of any line, we have to identify two points on that line and then find the rise divided by the run. Well, we have the velocity at one point, you know, at five seconds. Sorry, we have to identify the position at two points, at two points in time. We know at five seconds it was moving at, uh, or is at a position of 15 centimeters, but that's only one point on the line. So we could choose another one, like on the line that we drawn. So this one, or we could choose that one. In this case, I just decided to choose one over here uh, at two seconds. The data point here on our line of our tangent line is uh, it's at zero centimeters. And at 10 seconds, it was at 40 centimeters. And it's not that the spinner was at those positions at those times. It's, those are just two points on the tangent line that we've drawn. And all we're after is the slope of that tangent line. So what is the rise? It went from zero to 40 centimeters. That's the rise. And it started at two seconds, gone over, went over to 10 seconds. So the run is positive eight seconds. So our slope is rise divided by run, the change in the position divided by the change in time. That gives us 40 centimeters divided by eight seconds or five centimeters per second. So that right there is the slope of the tangent line and is the instantaneous velocity at five seconds. So if we want to make a velocity versus time graph, after all that, we actually only have one data point. We know that at the fifth second, it was moving at approximately five centimeters per second. And how do we know how fast it was moving at after six seconds? Well, it's going to be greater than five centimeters per second. And at the seventh second, greater than that, but we'd actually have to go in and draw tangent lines at each specific time find the rise over the run, do the calculation to get all of this data. So unless you have another graphical tool that allows you to find the slope of tangent lines with a given data set, that's how you're going to have to analyze the data. Well, for us, um, if you, we're going to use a software called Logger Pro to do that analysis because it has a button, uh, actually this button right here, it's called the tangent tool, where it can approximate the slope of a tangent line on curves, which is going to give us the instantaneous velocity that we want. So let me show you how that looks. If you have the Software Logger Pro, you're going to use it to find the slopes of your tangent lines, which will be the instantaneous velocity at each specific time. When you open a new file in Logger Pro, it's going to give you just a generic X and Y column. When you put the data in here, it's going to automatically plot it on the graph. And there's ways that you can label your graph and label your columns. And so we're going to put the time values in the X axis, the position values in the Y axis, and then analyze it just like we talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up a sample set of data so we can look at it. So here I've taken the position values and the time values that we just got done talking about. I'm going to use the tangent tool right up here. You click on this button and if you move your mouse back and forth, it basically puts a tangent line wherever your cursor is on the data point that is on the graph. And so you can see that up here, the tangent lines are pretty steep and as we go down earlier the tangent lines are less steep because at that point the spinner was moving slower. You'll also notice when you press the tangent tool button that there's a box that shows the time that you're selecting and what the slope is at that position which is the instantaneous velocity. So we approximated at five seconds the slope was about five centimeters per second so let's see if the tangent tool agrees. If we put it at five seconds it shows that the the slope of the position time graph at that point is 5.14 centimeters per second, which is pretty close to what we estimated when we did the calculation by hand. Now that we can see that it's giving us values we expect, we can move over to another second, let's say six seconds, and now it was moving at about 5.8 centimeters per second. At seven seconds, it was moving at 6.4 centimeters per second. So you can see this is a pretty quick way to get an estimate for the slope at particular points on your position versus time graph, giving us the instantaneous velocities we want to make a velocity versus time graph. 
But before we just go ahead and hover our mouse over each data point and write down what it says, let's just make sure what Logger Pro is telling us is reasonable, it's what we expect. When we tried it for five seconds, that was close to what we expected, but let's go back to about time zero. Okay, you can see that the tangent line there has some positive slope. And let's think through, like, what would we expect the velocity to be? The number is 1.867 centimeters per second at time zero. And think about this. What velocity did your spinner start with? Well, all of our spinners should have started from rest. So, so we should expect that the velocity at time zero, the instantaneous velocity, is zero centimeters per second. So why is Logger Pro telling us almost a velocity of almost two centimeters per second? Well, it comes down to how Logger Pro calculates or approximate the slope of the tangent line. In order for it to approximate the slope of a tangent line, it has to use surrounding data points. So for five seconds, for instance, if it's gonna find the slope, it needs to use data from the fourth second, the third second, the sixth second, and the seventh second. It needs surrounding data points to approximate the slope at that point. If we go all the way back to the beginning, there's no data points to the left, only to the right. And so the approximation of the slope will be biased towards the slope around later data points. So this is higher than it should be, which means we shouldn't we shouldn't accept that first slope. Or if we go to the first second, there's only one data point on the left, there's a lot on the right, and so we probably shouldn't accept the first two data points because there's not enough surrounding data. Well, if we don't accept the first two data points, we shouldn't write those velocities down because we don't think that would be reasonable based on how Logger Pro calculates that. That also means we probably shouldn't accept the slope of the last two data points. So when you guys record your velocities, which came from the, the slope of the tangent lines for this position versus time graph, don't include the first two and the last two data points. But if you guys have 10 or more data points, that sh should still have enough data, so we're gonna have six to eight different velocities to make a quantitatively accurate velocity versus time graph. So once you've got all of your instantaneous velocities, you're gonna create a velocity versus time graph for further analysis. If you have a lab sheet like this, you can record your, you know, your velocity at specific times. You can plot your velocity versus time graph, but we wanna go beyond just graphing it and, and identifying the shape. Is the velocity changing linearly? Is it changing you know, like a top opening parabola, a side opening parabola, and you know, a hyperbolic relationship? Uh, we wanna go a little bit further. You guys are gonna make your velocity versus time graph. Identify the shape, and then if it's linear, like we can actually go a couple steps further, we should be able to write the equation for that line, just like we did for our toy car lab, where we start with the general slope intercept form of a line, and then walk through and replace all four of these letters with, well, y and x with symbols for the what's graphed on the y and the x-axis, that would be v and t. And then remember, you replace the slope value, the m and the b, with numbers and units. So the specific slope, what's the quantitative slope value of your line, if it's a line, numbers and units. What's the approximate number and units for your y-intercept for your equation? Once you do that, we're gonna come back together in class and make whiteboards so we can compare all of our equations, compare all of our graphs, and learn something new about how to describe the motion of objects that change their velocity.